It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSent Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSent. All right, so folks, let me ask you a question. What is pelvic pain? What is pelvic pain? Now for you who have pelvic pain, you know all about it, but uh, today we're going to talk about pelvic, uh, pelvic pain. Uh, we have an experienced person with us, Stephanie Fowler, who is um, a, uh, you're an occupational therapist, correct? Yes. Okay, from the Lehigh Valley Health Network. And um, this is interesting. I was doing some reading on this pelvic pain. Not only does it happen with women, there are some men that can have pelvic pain as well, right? Yes, correct. It affects okay. both men and women. All right, so let's talk about what is, what, first of all, what is pelvic pain? Well, pelvic pain can occur for a variety of reasons. Um, basically, what happens is there's some type of pelvic floor dysfunction. So the pelvic structures, what? pelvic floor dysfunction. Pelvic floor dysfunction. Dysfunction, okay. yes. So the structures either become too tight, too weak, or there's an imbalance within the pelvic floor, which is basically the structure that lies at the bottom of your pelvic girdle, consisting of the muscles, the ligaments, and the connective tissue. Okay, so now, um, what are the, um, what causes pelvic pain? Pelvic pain, so that generally pelvic pain is caused by when the muscles are too tight. The underlying muscles in your pelvic floor, which would be the connective tissue, the ligaments, or just the muscle itself. Uh, a certain age group get this most often? It affects all age groups, anywhere from children all the way up to the elderly. Um, it depends. Uh, there's certain risk factors that put you at increased risk. Generally, pelvic pain, that's something you'll see, uh, for example, after post-radiation treatment, pelvic surgery, anything like that, those types of symptoms. So what is, the major, what is your major age group, though? Generally, I would say for pelvic pain, probably like middle-aged women is the most common. And mostly with women? Mostly with women, yeah. yes. Right. We'll get to the men in a, mi a minute, but there are some... Okay, so now what, what causes pelvic pain? When the muscles are too tight too within tight. your pelvic floor, okay. yes, it's okay. restrictive. What, what are some of the symptoms? Uh, painful sexual intercourse. Um, you might have a difficulty <clears throat> with urinary retention. You might not be able to void properly. Um, sometimes you have just experienced low back pain, or sometimes you can experience also pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, those are the, the, the major symptoms that yes. you would get? Yes. All right, All right. so now um, I'm, let's assume someone's experiencing um, pelvic pain. Um, now, see, that's interesting because it, uh, it also is associated with pregnancy, right? It could be, yes. Okay. So um, how does a person know who's pregnant, whether they're having a pelvic pain or just natural, you know, well, there growing are, of the baby? Well, there are common discomforts that come along with pregnancy, which would be uh, pelvic pain. Sometimes they can also get what's called a pubic symphysis dysfunction, and that's where the front of the pelvis from the pressure starts to separate. Um, that could cause pain. There could be different factors, um, but one big thing that we do try to work on is just basically strengthen the structure and also incorporate some different stretches to help alleviate the pain with pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, some people still suffer from the same symptoms after delivery, some don't. Um, so that's something that we would address in therapy. Okay, so um, a person out there would have what kind of symptoms if they... Um for pelvic pain, it's just actually, does it, is it, is it hurt? Is it really painful? Yeah, it actually, it might, some people describe it as uh, a tightness where it actually feels like you can't, you know, you might be restricted and you might not be able to bend forward as far as you normally would. Mm -hmm. Or some people just experience it with sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the severity of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But basically, the longer that you have the symptoms, the more you start to notice it in the surrounding muscles. And that will be where you start to notice tightness in the front or the backs of your legs, um, your glutes, or even your abdomen. Mm -hmm. And you say this mostly uh, it happens in w with women, correct? Yeah, most commonly okay. with women. All right. So um, if I don't address this, if someone who has these symptoms that you're saying, what, what are the symptoms again, some of the symptoms? Basically, you have either pain in your pelvis, you can get pain in your low back, um, pain with sexual intercourse, okay. difficulty urinating. Yeah, okay. So if you're having difficulty urinating, you, you may have some concerns. Mm -hmm. Yes. How serious is this if it's not treated? It, it be, can become serious if it's not treated. It could lead to the need to get some sort of pelvic surgery to fix the, the symptoms. 
Um, so generally, the best thing to do would be to talk to your doctor to get a referral sooner than later when you start to notice these symptoms, because that's generally when your outcomes would be the best with pelvic rehab. Okay, so now you're up at the uh, Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton, right? Lehigh yes. Valley. Okay, okay. So now um, I'll put the phone number up in, in, in a second. Um, so we have some people may have the symptoms, okay? They may have the pelvic pain. All right, so the doctor says, you know, you have this concern with the pelvic, and, and then, then they come to you, correct? Yes. Because you're an occupational therapist. Yes. And you know a lot about this. Yes, okay. yes, I specialize in this area. Okay, okay, so um, what would be the pelvic rehabilitation then? Well, how do we, we're starting here. So what would be pelvic rehabilitation? What would you do? Basically, so I would focus specifically on the muscles, the ligaments, and the connective tissue that underlie the pelvis in what area I call the pelvic floor. Okay, so then I would do an evaluation to kind of figure out specifically what is the cause of the symptoms. And that's where I'm checking for the pelvic floor dysfunction. Are the muscles too tight? Are they too weak? Or is there an imbalance? You know, are they partially tight and partially weak? Because you have several muscles that run throughout your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So you could have a combination of the two. Okay, so now you start the process and you mm -hmm. begin to, uh, is this a painful thing, this rehabilitation? No, no, it's non-invasive. It's because not I don't painful like pain. at all. No. Okay. No, it's not painful at all. All right. So, okay. So, what types of patient population slash diagnosis would you treat? So, generally, if you're experiencing a pelvic floor dysfunction, usually some symptoms you might experience would be urinary or fecal incontinence. Mm -hmm. You might have urinary retention or urinary urgency or frequency. Um, you might have pelvic or low back pain. You could have pain with sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. um, you may even just have chronic constipation, or you could even have a pelvic organ prolapse. So these are not good things. No. <laughs> okay. I mean, but they're, they're, they're treatable, okay? Right, they right. are treatable. Uh, okay, so um, what would be um, a, a typical treatment session? Typically, a treatment session lasts anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, okay? And it would include um, various exercise uh, programs in order to target either stretching, strengthening, or a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. um, I could use biofeedback. That's just a tool used to track the muscle activity. It helps the patient gain an awareness of if they're properly contracting their pelvic floor and then returning to full relaxation. I can use electrical stimulation. That helps contract a weak muscle that you might not voluntarily be able to contract on your own or relax a tight muscle. And then I can also use various manual techniques to help stretch and lengthen the structures. Okay, so you have these symptoms um, in, the, in the pelvic having pain. Um, uh, either urinating or sexual intercourse or whatever, um, and, and then they, they, go, they have to go to a doctor. They, could they call you and say... They can yeah. call me with questions to see if, that, if they think, you know, it might be something appropriate, but generally for me to see them, they would need a referral okay, from a but doctor. You would give them the direction and advice. Yes. I mean, so some people may be experiencing some pain, and they don't really know if that's the case. Right. But, and here's the phone number, folks. It's 501, uh, excuse me, 570-501-6716. It's Stephanie Fowler, Fowler. and, and they, so, so, I mean, sometimes uh, people who are listening to the program, you know, they may have some of these pains, but they don't really know if it's that case. I think if they call you and say, Stephanie, I'm experienced this and whatever, you'd be able to give them direction, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep, we can. Uh, so what, what, can, what can we do prevention? I like prevention. What can we do to prevent pelvic problems? Well, generally there needs to be a more awareness of actually exercising your pelvic floor. Um, there and are certain exercises that you can do. Yeah, traditionally that's talk what... talk about them on the air? Yes. Okay. <laughs> traditionally that's what most people um, know of as a Kegel exercise. Yes. I refer to it as a pelvic floor contraction. Um, the most important thing that I see is any type of stressful activity, which would be a sneeze, cough, even exercise, can put pressure on your pelvic floor. So if you don't perform that pelvic floor contraction, it can actually bulge your pelvic floor and cause weakness over time. So that's one big one that we see um, most commonly that causes urinary incontinence. Okay, so women work out. Okay, there are a lot of women who work out. Yes. They exercise, all right? Uh, and so what do, you, what do you say to them? Because, which is a good thing. I mean, you, know, you have core fitness here that, you know, a lot of people, they, they do exercise. And even at the Health and Wellness Center, right. you see these women exercising, which is, you know, what, what should they do to prevent... A, this pelvic problem? Yeah. I would say just make sure, um, you know, utilize your pelvic floor, learn how to contract your pelvic floor and kind of brace it, 
you know, for that, the exercise, anything else, don't avoid your pelvic floor. You want to include it in your entire conditioning program. So there is a, there is a way to do that. Women, no. Yep. Okay. And I, I don't know that way, okay, because obviously I'm not a woman. Yes. But they should know how to do that. Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, is there, a, is there a place they can go to learn how to do this, or should they have to call well, you? They could come to me. I think it would be, a, you know, a good move if you're unsure of how exactly to do the exercise or, you know, if you have recently started an exercise program and you're not sure if you are doing it correctly, you could come in for, even if it's just a one-time session to kind of learn how to, how to do that more as like a wellness prevention type. So when someone's, ex uh, women are exercising, because it happens mostly in women, and you're saying the age group is, it's, it's predominantly I know it could happen to any, any age, but predominantly, what ages are there, you said? Predominantly, it's middle age, generally. Um, middle age, 35, 40? 40, yeah. 40. Okay, so from 35 up, you know, women who are actively exercising, you know, whether it's thread, treadmill or whether it's you know, steps or whatever they do, right. uh, they should be aware of this public exercise. Yeah, because there are things that put you at increased risk, um, childbirth, obesity, prior pelvic surgery, or even radiation treatments. Mm -hmm. Um, so it wouldn't be a bad thing to kind of learn how to brace your pelvic floor to further eliminate any other problems. Okay, in you're, in it every, you're in it every day. You're an occupational therapist specializing in pelvic pain. Yes. Okay, uh, what were, <clears throat> when you see a severe case, okay, the severe case uh, was caused by a person not really responding when they had the pain. I'm just saying this. I don't know. You can mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. If they had the pain... Uh, and they let it go, and they're still exercising, et cetera, and then it gets to the point where it's really hurting them, okay? Uh, is, is that a severe case? Yes. Yes, at that point... I'm uh, good at this. <laughs> you are. <laughs> at that point, conservative methods might not be as reliable. You know, you might need to resort to other surgical methods, so that's why it's important to kind of, as soon as you notice the symptoms, talk to your doctor, get a referral for pelvic rehab to kind of alleviate needing further intervention. Okay. I'm speaking with uh, Stephanie Fowler, folks. She is an occupational therapist at the uh, Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton. Her phone number is 570-501-6716. Talk about pelvic pain. Uh, nothing to take you know, for granted, but there are ways that you can hopefully prevent it. Uh, what are the typical, uh, typical trip, treatment sessions we'll talk about? And once again, we'll come back, we'll talk about these symptoms. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Lasad Show. For remember, all of our health shows are on sspTV.com uh, from the Lehigh Valley Health Network, uh, and my email is sam at sspTV.com. We're talking about pelvic pain, folks, uh, mostly in women, but men also get it. Uh, Stephanie Fowler is, a, is the uh, occupational um, uh, therapist yes. uh, at the um, Health and Wellness Center. Okay, the symptoms of pelvic pain, again, menstrual cramps, menstrual pain, vaginal bleeding, painful or difficult urination, constipation or diarrhea, uh, bloating or gas, blood seen with a bowel movement, pain during intercourse, fever or chills, pain in the hip area, pain in the groin area. Now, th some people may have these, but they're, they may not be uh, a serious situation, okay? But here's where, what advice do you give these people if they're experiencing any of these symptoms? Well, first, definitely talk to your doctor. Sometimes it could be your primary care physician, but if they feel that you need to be seen by a specialist, a urologist, a gynecologist, or an obstetrician, they can make that referral, and then they will determine if it's something that can be treated with pelvic rehab, or is it something that needs more of a, some type of medical intervention, medication, surgical, anything like that. So what's a typical uh, treatment like? So a typical treatment session generally lasts for about 30 to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. Generally, I see you for about one to two times a week. Okay, so depending on your symptoms, we'll focus on exercise, targeting specifically stretching or strengthening of the pelvic floor. Um, I'll use different tools to help maximize that, which would be biofeedback, can help you um, gain a better awareness of how to contract or relax your pelvic floor electrical stimulation that can help contract your muscle. No, that does not hurt. When you say electrical stimulation, it, just, it sounds scary, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't scare scary. me now, okay? No. Right. <laughs> it does not hurt though, no. Right. Basically what it does is it just grabs the muscle and it basically contracts it for you okay. when you're unable to on your own. Okay. Um, and different manual techniques. I can use massage, I use different modalities, heat or cold to help relieve your pain. 
nothing's painful. I don't want to elicit the pain that you're already having. Mm -hmm. So we kind of if go anything, through it you're, slowly. You're going to relieve the pain. Right. We relieve the pain. We kind of go slowly in a progression mm -hmm. that the patient can tolerate. Are they successful? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Pelvic rehab is very successful, especially if you come again kind of in the earlier stages when you first start to experience the symptoms. It will be a lot easier to alleviate your symptoms and it will be quicker. Okay. Um, I, I always like to, like when people come like you, I always like to, sometimes I like to have other people on who, uh, testimonials that had the pain. Mm -hmm. Remember that next time, Leanne, we'd like to have a person come on. Because this way, um, you know, you're telling it, your, your specifics. But if you had a person here, uh, give me Miss X. I don't need to name the persons, but give me an example of a person that you're treating uh, without names, uh, what they experience, what they're doing now, and what the outcome was. Well, for example, like a common patient um, that might see me for pelvic pain. Talk about a specific per person. Let's call it patient X, okay? Okay. She called you or he called you, et cetera. What, what, what was the, take me through that. Scenario. Right. So she was having symptoms of pelvic pain. Okay. Hers was pretty severe to the point that she couldn't tolerate wearing um, tight clothing. She was unable to get, engage in sexual intercourse. Um, she had difficulty. She had urinary retention. She was unable to void properly. Um, and she also had low back pain, okay? So all these symptoms combined, she was having a pretty tough time. She was unable to work at the time. Okay, okay. at that point, did she, did she go to her doctor first, and then the doctor recommended the rehabilitation? Or, yes. Or did she, okay. Yes, so okay. she visited her gynecologist, okay. who then referred her for pelvic rehab services. Okay. Um, I did an evaluation, <clears throat> okay. and basically in her case, what I found was that she had... Um, an imbalance in her pelvic floor. Some of her muscles were tight, whereas some of the muscles were weak. So she had difficulty, she couldn't properly contract and relax her pelvic floor, which you need to do in order to avoid properly. Was she middle-aged? She was actually 32. Okay. Yeah, yeah so. The, the, is, is, is she obese, heavy? No, she wasn't. Actually, she didn't, have, yeah, she didn't have any of the typical risk factors that usually contribute. Okay, <coughs> so she went to... Um, then you started rehabilitation. Yes. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and how long, how many sessions did she have to go through? Is she still doing the sessions or is she okay? No, no, she's <coughs> Excuse me. I believe I've seen her for eight weeks, so two times a week. So I've seen her for about 16 sessions. Okay. Yes. And it's completely relieved now. Yes. Okay. Yep. But there are certain exercises. Basically, all of my patients I send home with a home exercise program, things that you'll want to do to maintain what we achieved in therapy mm -hmm. in order to... Um, alleviate these symptoms again from happening in the future. So if they're having these concerns or symptoms, uh, Stephanie, a suggestion would be is to, if they're severe, like with the ones I mentioned, if they're, right. you know, if there's bleeding or, or, or miscarriage or whatever, um, th then you definitely should go to your, your primary doctor and, and then the, he, he or she would prescribe what's, what's necessary. Yes, yes. Um, so, okay, so now uh, w w we can expect uh, during the treatment, it's uh, twice a, a week, right? If yep, one to two times a week. Okay, and you and you prescribe um, ex certain exercises, right? Yeah, so a lot of it, we do a lot of the hands-on manual techniques in treatment, and then I prescribe different exercises that you carry out throughout the week until you come to see me again. Pelvic uh, pain, is is it, is it a common thing? It is common. Actually, more than one-third of women nationwide suffer from some type of pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, and it's one of those things that it's not as commonly known about just because people are more embarrassed or afraid to talk to their doctor or they think their symptoms are, you know, unable to be relieved or common or expected with age, but they're not. So that's a good part about giving you a call. I mean, right. so it's, it just takes a phone call and say, you know, 570-501-6716, ask for Stephanie Fowler. And, you know, they can voice their concerns, and then mm -hmm. you can give them direction, okay, instead of yes. them. Um, so this was a 32-year-old woman, okay? Mm -hmm. Have you had, um, uh, was, she, did she, was she in an exercise program? Was she? Uh, yes, yeah, she was physically active, yep. Mm -hmm. And she actually, due to her symptoms, um, by the time I had begun to see her, she actually had to stop her exercise program. But then once I had finished with her, she was able to re-engage in a normal exercise routine. See, if you're telling me one-third of all the women have, have discovered pelvic pain, uh, that's a lot of women. It is. You know, yes. and, and this girl is, was 32 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, have you, um, how about a, another case scenario? 
Maybe well, not as critical, but... Okay. Uh, one of the more common, too, um, you know, that you see more in the elderly. Um, I've treated somebody as old as 99 years old wow. for, yeah, for urinary incontinence. Almost as old as Leanne. <laughs> for urinary incontinence. Um, and that would be more traditionally caused by, like, a de overall deconditioning. So just like any other muscle in your body, if you don't pay attention to your pelvic floor and exercise your pelvic floor, it's going to become weak, just like any other muscle in your body. So that's why you want to incorporate it into part of your exercise program. Is there a daily routine or daily exercise program you could recommend to I me? Mean, now, you're talking about seniors as well that have these problems. Yes, right? yes. A, a lot of seniors? Yes. They're the ones that more commonly you'll see, like urinary incontinence. Yeah. Yeah. Pelvic pain is more traditionally um, middle-aged, maybe directly after childbirth. And there's, and there's exercise programs for the seniors, women uh, yeah, one who of are the in the main, 70s? Or, right. Or so, maybe. so in addition to targeting your pelvic floor and doing what we talked about, kind of that Kegel or that pelvic floor contraction, mm -hmm. um, it's also important to maintain your core stability. Your abdominals play a huge part in assisting the contraction of your pelvic floor. And it also kind of help to balance everything out. So it causes, if your pelvic floor gets too tight, generally your abdomen is weak. Okay. If you strengthen your abdomen, it'll help pull on your pelvic floor and coordinate the two. How about uh, walking for seniors? Uh, you know, a, a lot of exercise. I mean, walking. I mean, some of them can't really do the, you know, the strenuous uh, exercises, right. but walking or whatever, some things. Yep, walking is a great activity that'll help your core stability. Um, See, seniors have a tendency, this, they're sitting all the time, okay, and relax, which is, you know, the, so sometimes that's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, my wife always tells people just get up, you know, once in a while, walk around, mm -hmm. instead of being stationary for two, right. three, four hours, okay? That's not a good thing. Being stationary? For, yeah. No, it's not. And the nice thing about your pelvic floor is you can exercise it anywhere and everywhere. Nobody's gonna know you're doing it, you know? So you wanna make sure, just kind of incorporate into your daily routine. I always tell people, get in the habit, you know, do your pelvic floor contractions maybe every day when you brush your teeth in the morning and yeah. at night, or, you know, when you're doing the dishes, incorporate a little bit of an abdominal contraction. How about doing the limbo? <laughs> you can Leanne contract, does the limbo. You That's can contract your pelvic floor during anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, how about, how about dancing? Does that help you? Yeah, yeah, dancing. I was just kidding. But the limbo, you, you know, your back and your, mm -hmm. you know, your, you have. Yeah, to definitely kick. works on your core stability. Yep, you're See? stretching different muscles. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm giving you some good advice. <laughs> so the, the limbo is something that we so get your limbo <laughs> sticks out, folks, like Leanne has, and do the limbo. Um, so moving around, some exercises to prevent that, but uh, of course. If you're experiencing any of this, any kind of pain, or you have some symptoms, I highly suggest calling Stephanie and saying, Stephanie, I, I'm having this, what do you think? And she'll give you the right direction. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. We're talking about pelvic pain. Women mostly, but also men. Stephanie Fowler is here, who is an occupational therapist at the Health and Wellness Center, Hazleton, 570-501-6716. Now let's talk about men. Okay, uh, even though it's majority women, yes. but uh, for all the men, particular seniors are out there, uh, you know, what are some of the symptoms they get? Right. Symptoms are generally the same for pelvic pain. You might have pelvic pain, you might have low back pain. Um, you can also experience urinary retention, again, where you have inability to void properly. Men generally experience these symptoms more so pre or post prostatectomy. Uh, maybe if they're in bladder or prostate cancer treatment or post-treatment. Um, they all might also experience urinary incontinence, symptoms like those. So those are much less common, but those are the ones that you'll generally see, you know, pre- or post-treatment for cancer or prostatectomy. Okay, so it's something that is rather serious if you, if you let it go for a while. Yes. Okay, so basically is if you're having pelvic pain, um, and you really don't know specifically how severe it is, right. once again, I would definitely give you a call. You yes. know, and because you could say, Sam, it's this, or, or Mrs. So-and-so. Right, uh, we but can then, figure out what direction What direction, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's important, okay? Uh, and that'll, you know, uh, relieve some people in knowing. So, okay, they have the pelvic pain. The doctor says, you know, you have this. I suggest now you go to see Stephanie at the Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton. Uh, and so what is this pelvic rehabilitation? What, what do you do? Basically, so that's where I would just figure out exactly what's causing your symptoms. Is it tightness in your pelvic floor? Is it weakness? Or is it a combination of the two? I figure out an exercise program that would consist of stretching, strengthening, 
different modalities or tools to kind of help you gain a better awareness of how to contract or relax your pelvic floor. And then we transition you to a home exercise program, a way to maintain it. And you've been very successful with yes, it. Yes, very okay. successful. So the most important thing I would suggest to anybody, particularly my senior friends out there, uh, you know, I know you like to sit around, watch television, and uh, but you got to stay active, yeah. you know. So a person who is at home and really can't get out because of the weather, what, getting up, walking around, mm -hmm. doing some things, give me some suggestions what they should be doing. Yep, so basically just engaging in any kind of light activity, even if it's just, yes, yeah, standing while you do the dishes or you know, taking a walk around the block when the weather is nice, anything like that, anytime. And you always want to make sure, you know, don't forget about your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Engage your pelvic floor. Learn how to do a proper pelvic floor contraction in order to prevent some of these symptoms from further happening. And particularly women who are exercising. Yes, you want to be very careful. You want to what's, do what's called bracing your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cause that pressure from the exercise to bulge your pelvic floor, which can weaken it. You want to make sure kind of brace it, do that contraction with in combination with the exercise that you're doing. So you really know your stuff about this pelvic stuff, don't you? Yes. <laughs> so you specialize in that, right? Yes. Stephanie Fowler, folks, uh, uh, from the Hazelton Wellness Center. Hazelton, uh, her number is 570-501-6716. Call if you have any concern, if you have any pain, just to give her, she can give you some advice. Stephanie, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Nice meeting. Nice okay. to meet you, too. We'll see you next time.